This morning I'm going to try and emulate the technique that David and Greg show in the book, which is when you're doing pieces, like this is the Collins, to pre-cut the recesses that we're going to use before we stick the Collins on the board. This is upper beam 6 and 7, and I've stuck it in place, but when I tried to do the second and third, I was getting some movement and it would fall in, so I decided I'd stick one. So both the recesses for the ledges have been have been cut and put in place. But now I can come and put the other pieces in. And it's staying. Pretty good. So this I've cut both sides. I've cut the one side here. I've got one of the recesses here. So now when we put the caliper in, we can see we get the, the correct measurement. And we get the same thing on this side. Now you might argue that this isn't fully in yet, so maybe I should fit it perfectly, but the truth is it doesn't really matter. Um, because we're adjusting the end, not the length, and so the length won't change. So with all the recesses in place, I can now stick it with the comfort of knowing that they're going to be exactly where I want them. Having made up the lodging knees and the hanging knees, I found it very difficult to put in the the, or to pre-cut for the ledges um, I still find I have to do that on the model um, it's just I have no way of holding particularly the um, the lodging knee in place so I revert back to the turbo carver which really does a fantastic job It's a short update on the bench, you know the bench is a working progress and I found that when I had the lights mounted at the back here I would get a lot of shadow so I needed to bring the light forward or at least to the center. So I made up these two brackets and so now when I put the light on um, I have no shadow on the inside of the mark or very little and I can even change the shadow by simply moving it. And of course, these are also adjustable. One of the key things that I've learned as I've come across is to try and mitigate the effect of cumulative errors. And so what we're going to do now, we we'll reach beam 7 on the upper deck and we're going to go back and check the measurement on the plan to make sure that we are where we're supposed to be. So it's very simple. All we do is we take a sheet of paper, mark on the center line, and we come up to the edge of beam five. And then we come on the second plan, do the same thing on the edge of beam five, and we come to the edge of beam seven. And then we take a measuring device and so we have an exact measurement. Now we go in the model and see how good we are. And so here's the test. That's the point there. And, and it's absolutely spot on. Well, that's some good news. I haven't had 
a lot of good news in this build on the upper deck. So that really is quite reassuring um, that there's no creeping error up to beam number seven. Now we're going to go on to an extremely interesting part of the build, and that is to build the galley stove. David and Greg um, suggest, in a sense, that this be done perhaps in brass. My soldering skills are not that great. And I have some birch plywood, which is 1 64th of an inch thick, or 0.4 of a millimeter. And I think this is just going to be absolutely perfect to build the stove. The simplest way to start this is to make up a box, and I've made this out of mahogany. Cut some pieces out, and that'll give us a feel for what we're going to build. And of course, we'll place it on the model. This only goes in place after we've planked the frames and this, this plate which I may use wood but right now it's a brass plate will actually be on some runners that keep it flat and it'll sit approximately here. One of the habits that we need to cultivate is wherever, whenever we're in a model shop and we see something we might need in the future to acquire it. So over the years I've been buying brass square section, all sorts of different sections, round um, welding rods, brass welding rods. And I also keep ends um, in a kit like this, which is any piece of brass or copper or aluminum that um, was left over from a job. I put them in here because you'll never know when you're going to need them. And it's quite interesting, all of the brass pipe needed for the stove came from this box. When I undertake a challenge like this, I'm always prepared to make a dummy one first, make all the mistakes on it, understand how I'm going to make it, and then actually try and make the final product. So I'm not going to go through all of the issues that went to this. Um, I've still got some work to do on it, but I'm pretty happy with how it's come out. We've um, redone the block to size and made it just thin enough that it can take the two thin pieces of 1 64th plywood. Um, but before we can stick them, we have to reshape the block um, to deal with the spaces on both ends. We mark the piece um, using a, a gauge that I had and then did all the various um, measurements, um, cut the lines on the pre -arc and then cut out um, both ends to give me space. Um, I'm showing the use of a file here rather than the mill um, to create the space in the ends. Um, and then finally we're cutting up all the pieces to create the framing. These are very thin pieces and um, the pre was ideal for doing this. I use various jigs to line up everything perfectly. A bit of a struggle, um, but again you have to make sure that the doors um, are all absolutely square. When you're doing fine adjustments, like going to fit a piece in here, um, I tend to put the piece in and mark it slightly long. Then I'll cut it. And then I put a small mark on it so that when I go to the sander, 
um, I can take off little pieces and I can see where I'm sanding, how much I'm sanding in relation to the, the, the piece. And that will allow me to fit it in perfectly. There's a small access door to the flume, so we drilled a hole and put some square brass section um, to simulate this piece. I took a long time to figure out how I was going to work out the fire grill for the oven and the grating bars. Um, there's even a spit at the top, which I've chosen to ignore. I used some very small dowels. Um, that piece in the center I've ignored. It's just too difficult to do it. Um, and then stuck the um, the grating using PVA and then when once this was done um, I fit it into the um, into the unit again using uh, PVA which gives me lots of working time To shape the top part, um, or the lower part of the chimney section, uh, I took all the measurements off the plan and then went to the Sherline mill to do this. It was just so easy um, to do it on the mill. Um, for those that you don't have a mill, of course, you can do this with a file. It's really not that hard. Um, I always leave a little piece extra so that the final um, touch, the final taking off the final pieces is done by hand um, and that way I get a, a perfect fit when I do it. Based on many trial fits um, I had to go back quite a few times just to do the final adjustment so that when the top is put on the main body that it seems to be a seamless join. And then again this was stuck using PVA Then to put the, um, the chimney, um, I used the mill to make sure that um, I got the, the hole um, at 90 degrees uh, to the unit. Now it was onto the rail and to do this I had to make up a jig. Um, if you don't have a jig, you're not going to be able to make both sides of the rail exact. This is a technique I learned when I was doing the Naparima where I had lots of um, similar size rails to, to bend and um, a, jig, a jig is the only way that this can be done and you can see with a little help it actually fit perfectly on the stove. The drip pan for the oil um, you know, you'd have a piece of meat hanging off um, the grating um, or grill, and that oil needs to be caught. That was quite a little challenge. Again, using the thinnest, thinnest pieces of hardwood to make it up, um, I rounded the outside edge, and the inside edge was flat. The stove certainly has been quite an interesting challenge, trying to keep everything to scale. Um, really tested myself. Um, the hinges were little brass pieces, not on the scale that I see in Greg's book, um, but um, for me I'm pretty satisfied with it. In terms of the rivets that held the stove together, I used thick CA, and to put the little pieces of brass on, 
Um, that was a real struggle and PVA actually turned out to be the best glue to be able to hold it in place. The problem I had with PVA glue is that it would get on the end of the piece I was trying to um, fix the hinges to the to the stove and it would stick on my little um, pliers rather than stick on the model. So, um, but all in all I'm pretty happy so now I'm going to paint it matte black and that's going to be the end of it. So we'll see you in the next video. I'm using a charcoal gray. Um, if I don't like that, I'll end up using um, black, but I like the idea of the charcoal gray. <laughs>